Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today is municipal versus countywide services. Uh, how do you define it? Where does the authority lie? Should it be changed? Should it be defined by a law? Well, we have a lot to cover. Joining us today are Brent Gardner, who's the uh, executive director of the Utah Association of Counties. We have Lincoln Schertz, who is the director of government affairs for the Utah League of Cities and Towns, and Michael Jensen, who can wear two hats, either as a member of the Salt Lake County Council or as the head of the Unified Fire Authority here in Salt Lake County. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. All right, let's just toss it out, because you guys seem to have a lot of conversation going. Uh, let's start with the, the fact that potentially a bill is going to surface. Uh, there's some discussion about a bill. Brent, you want to start that? Yeah. Um, our organization felt like um, it would be beneficial uh, for a number of reasons to approach the legislature with the uh, proposal of uh, defining what a countywide service is. Um, uh, two goals in mind there, to avoid duplication of services and then, of course, to um, to, to lower the cost and, and to provide services in the most cost-efficient manner for the taxpayer. Uh, we were suggesting that we might start at some point in time, such as today or in January when the legislature meets, and, uh, and determine what those services currently are that are being provided countywide and, and simply define those in statute and have them go forward as countywide services. So that was our original uh, thinking as we approached the interim committee of the legislature uh, a couple months ago. Do you guys at uh, League of Cities and Towns have a different look on this by any means? Not necessarily. I mean, I think the goal of trying to define which services are best provided by the county and best provided by cities is an important goal for us to, to figure out. Uh, the big concern for us is candidly where the money is, and I think that's been the big question. If you define it as a countywide service, in essence, everyone within the county has to pay for those services through their property tax levies. Uh, that are levied by the county. Uh, if it's defined as a municipal type service, then residents within cities don't get charged by the county for those types of services. It's the onus is on their individual cities to provide those services and the level of those services can be defined by those cities. So truly by defining them as countywide services has a huge impact on what someone's property tax bill is going to look like as a resident within a city versus in the unincorporated county. So these are important discussions to be had. Uh, there are probably some disagreements on and nuancing that has to take place on which services are countywide and which are uh, best provided by cities and towns, and I think that's what the discussion is going to try and focus in on. What happens if you get a situation, though, where you've got, um, and, and I can think of Cottonwood Heights as an example, where you've got either contracted county services and, uh, or, you know, provided from the county, and then they decide okay, we want a higher level of service. Now, they basically have two options. They, they can cease to collect the county tax and provide the service internally, uh, or they can uh, adjust their contracting with the county and perhaps buy a higher level of service. I, I, I've, I've heard conversations like this. Um, you know, how would, how would a, a, a law impact that, particularly in these heavily populated counties. Well, and that's the big question. I think the reason mm -hmm. we've been having so much discussion lately is you have the recent incorporation of Cottonwood Heights, relatively recent, uh, relatively recent incorporation of Holiday City, and discussions of possibly a new city um, in Mill Creek. And with those three cities, they have to make some very clear decisions at the po point of incorporation or soon thereafter as to whether or not they want to continue to rely on the county to provide basic municipal type services or if they want to start providing those services internally. Uh, the key distinction is, is how those services will be paid for. Either the city is going to levy a property tax to pay for those types of services, and they clearly have more control uh, locally if the city were providing those services, or they continue to contract with the county and can determine through contracting uh, the level of service they want to get. In addition, they can actually join certain organizations like the Unified Police District or the Unified Fire Authority, uh, where they will levy a property tax on behalf of those entities to provide fire service in the UFA circumstance or police services in the UPD circumstance. So there's a couple of different options uh, that they can look at. But there's a major difference, I think, Chad, just so we're, we're clear in, in those examples that you're using, because those are existing services that are already being provided by city and county, municipal services in particular. Uh, what we were focusing on were services that were not uh, necessarily duplicated at this point in time, where we could say, no, this is a service the county is providing countywide. There, there isn't necessarily a tax issue at that point. It's simply a, 
what's the, uh, what makes the most sense in, in providing the service on a regional basis and making it cost effective for the citizen. So we're trying to avoid the situation you're describing by not uh, dealing with services that are already being provided by both entities. But looking down the road to, to clarify that. Correct. Uh, does that does that scenario change? I mean, you want such front counties are you know Salt Lake, Weber, Davis uh, have very different needs and would look things very differently than say Kane or Garfield or San Juan County. It, they are different, and part of your example is there's only a few counties that provide municipal type services, um, and so what I think Brent and the association want to do is deal with those broader, more regional type services, um, the assessor, the treasurer, the uh, recorders, office. all of those types of services. And then when you get into the human services, so aging services, the senior centers, those types of areas that traditionally counties have been doing. And so I think that's what the association's been doing. Now we've been having dialogue with the league over the past few years in those counties where we do provide municipal services in Salt Lake County. You have some in Weber, Davis, Tooele counties where... Wasatch County. Wasatch, right? where they do provide municipal type services as well. So this is gonna be, and that's where I think we all kind of are laughing, is this is gonna be at different levels and different stages for the conversation to take place. Um, it would be good if we could get at least a base level out there of saying this. these are what county services are to the residents so they know um, we can keep the economies of scale keep the cost down all the residents are going to get those services but then in certain service sectors that make sense for more regionalization then I think we want to look to the cities to partner with us where it makes sense mm -hmm. and I think they would love to in certain circumstances too um, but those are going to be discussions that need to be flushed out over the coming years so it's it's going to be a little bit more complicated I think than just one and, bill. And clearly where you have kind of commitments from both sides and agreement from both sides, consolidating administration, consolidating some of the major cost ses sectors in terms of overhead of operations, I think there's broad agreement and consensus that we should do everything we can to consolidate in areas where it's possible to save the taxpayer money. Uh, what we're trying to balance out is areas that do want enhanced levels of service. How do you service those areas uh, with that enhanced level of service without necessarily making everyone else pay for that enhanced level of service. And that's where the distinction between a county baseline of service and the municipal enhanced levels of service that their taxpayers can buy into if they so choose is, is kind of what we're looking is at. Is that something, Brent, you think could be legislatively uh, defined? Yeah, I, I think obviously you can, you can get to that point. Uh, it may be more complicated than it seems on the service at this point. Um, and some of those services that we're talking about are, are very complicated. That's already been proven by the counties that you've named where they've gotten into that. But our view was that there ought to be, and there are some services that clearly should be uh, provided on a countywide basis. And maybe that's where the level ought to remain. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there isn't an enhanced level at that point. Um, Search and rescue, for example. How do you enhance a search and rescue level of service? I don't know. More dogs. Yeah, more yeah. dogs, more <laughs> helicopters. What's what's the issue there? So uh, I think that's what we're we're trying to um, suggest is that would, there's would counties be hamstrung if if they were on one of those broader countywide services and then you start having cities drop out? I mean, could that have a negative impact on the counties because they because the economies of scale would be that. You're losing revenue while somebody's duplicating it, but the cost of doing the service still remains the same. Well, under our thinking, they wouldn't be able to drop out. It's a countywide service. They're paying in. They're they're being provided on some level. Uh, who knows what the funding mechanism is? Whether it's property tax, fees, federal funding, or whatever. There's a variety of ways for those services to be uh, paid for, but. Uh, you wouldn't have a situation where the city says we don't want this because, again, the legislature. Uh, and obviously those who are involved would also be in agreement that, hey, this is a service that everyone needs and it's best provided on a countywide basis. Okay, now there's, I, I can tell there's a rebuttal coming, but we also have a commercial break coming, so we'll pick this up and wrap it up in just a minute right here on the county seat. This is a good conversation. Stay with us. It's time you got off the beaten path. It's time you discovered something new. It's time to explore Kane County, Utah. Thousands of miles of trails, shorelines that go on forever. 
a horizon that compels you forward. Spend some time in Kane County and visit the past, present, and future. Kane County, Utah. It'll be time well spent. What is play? Is it culture? Is it adventure? Is it... Ooh, uh, it's a destination. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's correct. Cedar City and Brinehead Resort in the heart of Iron County, where outdoor excitement, culture, and the iron industry melt together. Come and forge a new adventure where play is the thing. You haven't forgotten how to play. It's just that you haven't been to the right place yet. in love with fall logan utah what do you picture when you hear rich county utah winter adventure snowmobile action pristine skiing spectacular solitude well if that isn't what first came to mind then you just don't know rich county snowmobiling monte cristo ice fishing bear lake skiing the backcountry Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. <laughs> 